Role based access control is a method of restricting network access based on the roles of individual users within an enterprise. RBAC lets employees have access rights only to the information they need to do their jobs and prevent them from accessing information that doesn't pertain to them. In this video, we will cover three step security check, authentication, authorization, and admission control. What is RBAC? Role and role binding. Who can be a user? group or service account, what can be a set of resources, and finally, cluster role and role binding. In the end, we will also share details about our free Kubernetes masterclass. Role-based access control is important, especially when you are preparing for Kubernetes certification that Certified Kubernetes Administrator CKA or Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist that's CKS. For both these exams, you should be very well versed with RBAC. Welcome to another episode of Docker and Kubernetes video series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner covering microservices and Docker to all the way installing and configuring Kubernetes cluster, including networking, storage, deployment, ports, and scaling your Kubernetes cluster using horizontal pod auto scaling, including how to prepare for the certification exam CKA or CKS. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Docker and Kubernetes for Administrator, that is CKA. And in this clip, our instructor will talk about rule based access control. This clip is taken from module on security, network policy, config map, and resource quota. Let's hear from our instructor on the same. Hello and welcome to this video. In this section, we would be discussing about Kubernetes security, which is the role based access control. So, there a uh, security check is done in three steps, like the Kube API server, which picks up the commands which we are executing. It actually goes to a three-step process where all the API call it runs through. So first we are authenticated. So authentication is not inbuilt in Kubernetes. You can have any third party authentication like LDAP or in case your cluster is running in, Azure Cloud or AWS, you can use their IAM functionalities or Azure AD in case of Azure, and you can authenticate the user uh, onto the cluster using the certificates token and the password and all that. And once the user is authenticated, it's designated as a valid user, then after that, it comes to the role-based access section, wherein Kubernetes handles whether a particular user is authorized to do a set of action or not. So if I'm making an API call, I should be allowed to make that API call or I should be denied to make that API call. So I, as a user, may be authenticated to uh, get into the cluster but I may not be authorized to do a set of actions on the cluster. So authentication is the first part, authorization is the second part. And once you have gotten into the cluster, you have got into, you have got an admission inside the cluster, right? So how we um, execute this role-based access control, where you would limit the users. How would you limit the users that we would be seeing in this particular section? So first, when we talk about role-based access control, till now, most of the exercises we were doing in default namespace. And we being an admin had all the rights in our cluster. But if I have any other user, like a dev user named Dan, then I'll not give the entire cluster access to that particular user, right? I want dev uh, access to be given to Dan user. His name is Dan and he belongs to dev team. So I'll create a namespace of dev team and I'll assign Dan user to the dev namespace. I'll create credentials for that particular user. I'll set the credentials and that nam namespace for using that particular user context. And then user is allowed inside that namespace, but what actions can dev do that can be only defined by a specific role I assigned to the user Dan. So in dev namespace, Dan can have a reader access, Dan can have a 
editable access on some specific resources. I can say Dan can only create a pod, kind pod or kind deployment, but Dan can't create a PVC. I can restrict action on the resource level as well. So when we are creating role and we have a user to whom I want to assign that role, that is called as binding. I'm binding the user to a role. And that is the way we are limiting the access given or assigned to that particular user. So we have role and role binding. Role will define the set of rules, which would be as additive rules or permissions, which can be granted to the user which belongs to this particular role. And as soon as a user belongs to this role, he or she or a group of users will get access whatever is being granted inside this role. But when we just say role, it belongs to a namespace. And we would see that when we say cluster role, that role is applicable on the entire cluster. When, but when we say just kind as a role, that should be attached to a single namespace. So how in dev namespace, I can have a role of a reader. And if I say Dan belongs to the reader role, then Dan will get access to dev namespace as a reader. So role binding, when we say it is binding the permissions which are defined in the role, either to a user or a set of users. So we have to understand who can do what in the cluster. So who can be a user, who can be a group of users, or who can be a process as well. Like my deployment takes the decision to scale with the help of horizontal pod autoscaler. I being a user, I can execute the scale command with kubectl scale. When I execute that, that API call is executed from my user credentials. But when HPA is saying deployment, hey, you got to scale the number of replicas now, at that point in time, deployment is triggering the scale command. So deployment should have the authority to execute that command. And that is called as a service account. When one resource talks to another resource and give a set of instructions, that time also the authorization is checked for. So either I can be a user, either I can be belonging to a group like a manager's group or a developer's group or a tester's group. And I can attach a role to the tester's group. Then individually, I am not attached to tester one, tester two, tester three. Rather, I have a group of testers. I put them in a group and I attach the role to them. Or I have a service account, which would be assigned to a particular resource. And whatever role is attached to the service account, that resource can perform those actions. So who can be a user, a group, or a service account? Same way, what can be a set of resources? It can be a set of resources on which I can perform the action. It can be a set of resources on which I can't perform the action. So there are some resources and there are some other resources. I would create a role which will grant me access to some of the resources and I don't get access to the other resources in that. So if I specify I can execute actions on deployment on volumes, then I would not be able to work with config map kind or secret kind or any other kind, but only work with deployment kind or pod kind or a service kind or a PVC kind. So here, whatever you specify in the role, only those accesses are given, rest all are denied. So now role is created. Now binding has to be done. I can say that user one is belonging to role or a set of group of users are belonging to this role or a service account is belonging to this role. So my subject can be either one of them or all three of them who would be binding to this particular role. As soon as I bind, that particular set of actions which I have defined inside my role can be done by this user or can be done by this set of users or can be done by the resource to which we tie up this service account. So this is on the namespace level. A 
रोल और रोल बाइंडिंग इन केस आई वॉन्ट टू गिव एक्सेस ऑन द एंटायर क्लस्टर लेवल अ रीडर एक्सेस अ एडिटर एक्सेस अ गाय हु कैन गो अहेड एंड डिलीट द डिप्लॉयमेंट अ गाय हु कैन डिलीट द पी वी एस वेल सो फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स विच वी कैन डू इट ऑन द क्लस्टर लेवल लाइक आई कैन ग्रांट परमिशंस टू अदर यूजर दैट इज ऑल्सो अ रोल ऑन अ क्लस्टर लेवल राइट आई कैन क्रिएट अ रोल that is also a role on the cluster level so when we say cluster level role it is having a wide scope entire cluster wide scope is there and when you grant permission you can don't grant permission on individual name spaces rather it belongs to the all the name spaces which are belonging to that particular cluster so when you are defining permissions that permission scope is entire cluster so we have to be a bit cautious because if we are granting a user a cluster wide scope he can go and execute those stuffs in any of the name spaces just not one or two i rather entire cluster name space same way how we did a binding of a subject which was a user or a group or a service account to a particular role when we are creating cluster role when i bind that cluster role to a user that is called as a cluster role binding so when i do that binding it grants the permission to cluster role to that particular subject so you, you can do multiple name space granting by using cluster role or cluster role binding so that was all about the r back stuff in the next sections we would see different ways of implementing security in our cluster so that was a clip taken from one of the lessons from a step by step training program on docker and kubernetes for beginners including certifications cka and cks i would like to invite you for a free master class on how to kick start your journey in docker and kubernetes right from learning basics what is docker what is kubernetes and getting certified by using a step by step 12 week road map to go from complete beginner to a certified kubernetes administrator if you are interested register for a free master class by going on to k21academy.com/kubernetes02 now the next batch for the training is starting on 19 january so it's few days after this video gets published and if you're watching this in future i still highly recommend you to go through this free class to see what to expect in the exam and learn basics on docker and kubernetes so k21academy.com/kubernetes02 I will see you in another episode of Docker and Kubernetes from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.